Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance related. Now for today's video, we're going to be providing an update on one of my favorite small cap companies we cover on the channel, none other than ESE Entertainment. Now I wanted to get this video out in advance of their Q3 results because they've been very busy and very active over the last couple of months. Now before we get into all that, please take a second, hit the like button you guys, it's a huge help to myself and the channel. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to do so. And let me know in the comments section below if you're currently holding shares of ESC, how you think this company stacks up to some of the other players in this space, and your thoughts on some of the recent news we're gonna cover in today's presentation. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. Okay guys, so that's right, today's video we're going to be providing an update on ESE Entertainment Incorporated, trades on the TSX Venture under the ticker symbol ESE, and on the OTC in the United States under the ticker symbol ENTEF. Now as you can see here, they had a very strong session. This is as of close on Tuesday, September 27th. They were up over 9% on the day, about 5 cents Canadian to close out at 59 cents. And if we look at a six month chart here, you guys, you can see they've been on a pretty strong uptrend since the first week of September, where they bottomed out at about 42 and a half cents. Now we've seen pretty strong support in that mid to low 40 cent range previously, around July 7th as well, and July 14th, where they bottomed out at 46 and a half cents so I definitely think support is in the mid 40 cent range and this may be presenting a great buying opportunity if you're looking for exposure to the gaming and e-gaming sector. Now in addition to the nice little run we've seen over the last couple of weeks for ESE Entertainment they also have Q3 results coming out tomorrow Friday of this week which is going to be a major catalyst. I expect to see continued revenue growth from this organization and they've had a number of key developments or press releases since our last coverage a couple of months ago. So in today's presentation, we're going to do a recap of the activity in Q2 and really tee this one up for the Q3 results, which again are coming out tomorrow. Now, before we get into the recent news from ESE Entertainment, I wanted to jump over to the company website. I'll leave a link in the video description below and really give you guys a refresher in terms of what this company is all about. So ESE is a global entertainment and technology company focused on gaming and esports. We provide a range of services, which we're going to talk about a little bit later in their updated investor presentation, which is marketed towards leading video game developers, publishers, and brands by providing technology, infrastructure, and fan engagement services internationally. So really a holistic solution or package for these developers. ESE also operates its own e-commerce channels, esports teams, and gaming leagues, which we've touched on in previous updates. The company was founded back in 2019 by Conrad Wasuela, who is a former professional professional CFL football player. Today, ESE has grown to consist of multiple assets and world-class operators, which we're going to look at in the gaming and esports industries. Our core expertise is bringing new users and players to video game developers and increasing game publicity. Through our process and technology, we become a key part of your team in order to make your game a success. And throughout Q2, ESE Entertainment really saw a whole host of successes that we're going to touch on in today's presentation. Now in terms of some of those world-class operators or partnerships, if we jump into the updated investor presentation, under the executive summary slide, you can see the core business lines here, gaming technology and gaming media, which we just alluded to, and some of the key partnerships that ESE has forged over the last few years. So Riot Games, Opera, Google, Ubisoft, EA, CD Projekt, and Epic Games, just to name a few. And these are some of the biggest names in the gaming and e-gaming space around the world. Now in terms of the company highlights, they focus on tier one customers. They've generated record revenue growth quarter over quarter, which we've touched on. We're actually gonna look at a slide towards the end of today's presentation, talking about that growth. And again, with Q3 just around the corner, you guys, a huge catalyst to keep your eyes on. They've got positive adjusted EBITDA and the ability to scale both their data and technology platforms. And they're now looking at a team in excess of 120 employees within ESE Entertainment. Now, all of that is really in pursuit of taking a portion of this massively expanding gaming market we're seeing around the world right now. So revenue of the global gaming market, you guys, is in the neighborhood of about $180 billion. There's currently 2.9 billion players globally that participate in some sort of video game. And the growth forecast between 2021 and 2025 is in excess of 50%. 
So obviously a very exciting space to operate in and a huge total addressable market or TAM. And you can see again the growth between 2021 coming in just shy of $180 billion forecasted out to 2025 in the neighborhood of about $270 billion. And the graphic on the right here we've actually discussed in previous videos, but right now about 51% of all gamers in the world come from the Asia Pacific region with an additional 25% in Europe, 15% in Latin America, and roughly 10% here in North America. And with all that being said, and as alluded to a little bit earlier, ESC Entertainment is really focused on providing those holistic solutions for the gaming and esports industry. So video game developers and publishers would come to ESE for one of these custom built solutions. They would pay ESE for that service and ESE Entertainment Group would then craft a 360 solution or a holistic solution that includes gaming technology, data infrastructure and gaming media to really propel these games to the next level or increase their overall awareness. And we've seen these results time and time again. If you go into their investor presentation, they list multiple different games that have seen exponential growth as a result of partnering with ESE. So now that we've had that quick refresher in terms of what ESE is all about, I wanted to jump over to the news and updates section of the corporate website and really talk about a few key developments or catalysts that we've seen over the last couple of months. Now the last video we put out on ESE was covering their Q2 results. So again, I wanted to get this video out in advance of their Q3 numbers because I see that as a major kickoff point for this company over the next couple of months. And as you can see, they've been very active in the news in terms of press releases since our last video. So we're gonna talk about a couple of these in more detail. The first came out July 21st. It talks about 24 new deals being signed in fiscal Q3 of this year. The other one I wanted to address is the appointment of a new CFO at the organization. And finally, an update that ESE Entertainment provided on their business and project pipeline. So the first article I wanted to discuss again came out July 21st and it talks about the number of new deals signed in Q3 of this year by ESC Entertainment. Now as you can see the company inked 24 new business deals and they're continuing to provide a range of services to leading game developers, publishers and brands by providing that holistic technology infrastructure and fan engagement solution. Now, Conrad Wasuela, who's the CEO, goes on to say the ESE team continues its strong global business development strategy by signing 24 new contracts and partnerships in fiscal Q3. Our new contracts and partnerships reflect the increasing demand for our technology and services with an increasing number of new game developers globally. We view these new business deals as evidence that ESE is building on its existing foundation and leveraging into new business opportunities. The entire team is excited to close Q3 three in full stride and continue to accelerate the momentum in Q4. And I think the numbers we're going to see come out tomorrow are really going to reflect these strides. Now, in addition to the new deals signed during the quarter, ESE continues to develop its technology business unit, specifically their Game Addict acquisition, which is now fully integrated within the ESE infrastructure. And the company has now released phase one of its big data software named Singularity, which we're going to look at a little bit later in today's presentation. And this is really focused around a proprietary data lake or BI business intelligence infrastructure. So in short, a ton of new contracts signed over the last couple of months, really a great reflection of the demand for this type of offering and the results companies see from partnering with ESE. Now the next piece of news came out on September 13th, and this is a big one here, talking about ESE appointing a new CFO or Chief Financial Officer by the name of Andrea Lewin. Now if we scroll down through the article, you can see Andrea is an MBA, CPA, and CGA with over 25 years experience in public company accounting and finance, and prior to joining ESE, she held a variety of senior roles at Great Canadian Gaming Corporation, which is another publicly traded gaming company under the ticker G. GCGC, with her most recent position looking over the operations and leadership of Great Canadian Gaming Corporation's British Columbia properties. And I should note in that position, Andrea was responsible for approximately 3,000 employees. Now as part of this role, she was responsible for strategic development, capital and operating annual budgets, and really supported this company through their growth from a small private entity to a $3 billion plus market cap company operating 25 different properties across Canada. So a ton of relevant experience in the gaming industry 
and the educational background along with the connections required to really propel ESE forward. Now, Conrad Wasuela, again, the CEO, goes on to say, we are thrilled to announce Andrea has joined as our new CFO. ESE looks forward to leveraging Andrea's deep industry knowledge, which I just mentioned, financial and operational expertise. I'm confident that Andrea's experience will help drive greater operational excellence in every area of our business and create long-term growth and value for ESE shareholders. Now, in response, Andrea says, I'm extremely excited to join the team at ESE Entertainment after experiencing significant growth with my last company, which we just mentioned, I see a clear opportunity to scale ESE to the next level. This vision is shared with CEO Conrad, COO Eric, and the rest of the team. This has created an opportunity to collaborate with an amazing group and build on the success that ESE has already experienced to date. My background is aligned and we are focused on scaling the business of ESE to the next level. So as an investor in this company, that's exactly what you want to see you guys is experienced members joining the leadership team that have the proven ability to scale companies and build or create value for shareholders. And we've discussed this on the channel previously, but when you invest in a lot of these smaller cap type of companies, you really are investing in the people and the leadership team behind the organization. And the addition of Andrea to the team at ESE is a huge vote of confidence for me personally. Now those articles are a perfect segue to this one here, which came out September 21st, and it really provides a nice little update or summary on the ESE business and project pipeline. So as we scroll down through the article, you can see it's separated out into a few key areas. So business development, strategic hires, which talks about that CFO position and new activation. So we'll start at the business development. Now recently ESE attended Gamescom in Germany, which is a significant international computer and video games industry event. And at this event, ESE showcased its technology solutions for large scale user acquisition campaigns. So great visibility for ESE and really one of the biggest events in the industry around the world. Now, in addition to that, the team is also attending the upcoming DeMexico conference, which is Europe's leading digital marketing and technology event, which took place September 21st and 22nd. So some major visibility for the team and really getting their solutions on the global scale. Now, under the strategic hire section, we already talked about Andrea joining the team in the CFO role, but in addition to that, ESE has also hired two new technology staff to really bolster their software development team. And this increased capacity will really allow them to devote additional development cycles to their Singularity product, which again is ESE's proprietary data and artificial intelligence platform. Now under the new activation section, ESE's racing simulator business, which is known as Digital Motorsports, teamed up with Toyota Ireland to supply a professional racing simulator for the event. And they've already signed on three new clients in the month of September, in addition to the ones we talked about a little bit earlier in today's presentation. And last but not least, ESE has also strengthened their communication front through a new partnership on the investor relations side of things, which is going to provide corporate communication services for the next 12 months. So again, really a focus and attempt to bring awareness to this organization and to the investment community. So as you can see, a lot going on over the last couple of months and really as a result, you guys, that's driving some of these key statistics we see in the investor presentation. So as of now, there's over 350 partners providing high quality traffic across various different digital channels. ESE is now averaging over 500,000 new player acquisitions on a monthly basis from over 100 countries around the world. And they're serving up over 7.3 billion monthly impressions. So the size and scale of this organization are expanding exponentially and again that's why I think this is such a great investment opportunity based on the recent pullback we've seen in the share price. Now in addition to all those big catalysts and developments we saw throughout Q2 we obviously have Q3 numbers coming out tomorrow which is going to be a huge development for the company. There's a number of other catalysts on the horizon I also wanted to discuss. So the first one is really this big data and artificial intelligence product which is known as Singularity. So I mentioned a little bit earlier they've now released phase one of this proprietary data lake solution. This adds new technology and capabilities to the ESE umbrella and they're continuing to develop the next phase of the Singularity platform with advanced machine learning insights through some of those new higher acquisitions. 
Now this is gonna be a key differentiator for ESE. This is an infrastructure collection of modules that provide solutions for collecting, processing, and sending massive quantities of information in any format. It's used to optimize player acquisition, so very relevant to the existing or underlying ESE business model. And our technology opens up big query capabilities, providing real-time analytics, reporting, and machine learning for customers and ESE alike. So for me personally, this is probably one of the most exciting developments from the team over the last few quarters. Now on top of Singularity, another key catalyst on the horizon for ESE is really the iGaming business unit. So this is online gaming or gambling and we've seen a huge increase in this space as governments around the world begin to ease legislation and really see the benefits of this online iGaming industry. So the company is expanding its business offerings to iGaming, which may be synergistic with its existing assets, subject to further business and regulatory due diligence. So again, a highly regulated space. We're continuing to see developments here and another thing to keep an eye on from ESE. Now, a little bit earlier in the presentation, I talked about some of the record quarterly revenue numbers we're seeing from ESE. And this slide here really does a good job of articulating or visualizing those numbers. So on the left, you can see annual revenue run rate in excess of $60 million based on their Q2 results from this year. Quarterly adjusted EBITDA in the range of about $885,000 with revenue growth in the neighborhood of 1,994%. So that's looking at Q2 of 2021 to Q2 of 2022. So extremely impressive growth profile and numbers. And you can see the quarterly revenue results here, you guys, are absolutely exploding up from $720. $20,000 in Q2 of last year to 4.2, 6.2, $8 million in Q1 of this year, all the way up to $15 million in Q2 of 2022, which we covered in our last video. And again, it'll be super interesting to see how Q3 numbers come in based on this aggressive growth we've seen over the last few years. So with all that being said, I wanted to leave you with this slide here, you guys, which really underpins my investment thesis for this company. ESE has been on an absolute tear. They've been adding new key members to the leadership team, signing new deals, and have have seen exponential growth in their top line revenue and when you compare this organization to any of their peers in the gaming space you can really see the investment opportunity and numbers start to make a lot of sense. So ESE has a market cap in the neighborhood of about $40 million Canadian. And when you look at some of the other organizations, whether you're talking about ESL at 1.5 billion, Keyword Studios at 2.7, Phase Holdings at 1.3, or the score at 2.5 billion, there really aren't a lot of other opportunities to get exposure to this sector at such a reasonable valuation with so much growth on the horizon. So for those reasons, you guys, I'm super excited about ESE. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts in the comment section below if you're holding shares, what you thought about these recent developments and your expectations for Q3. If you're still watching the video at this point in time, hopefully you found some value. So make sure you hit the like button. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, McNally Money, feel free to do so. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.